Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Kamikaze Sports Report. I'm Gage Samoji, he's Emerson Hip, and sitting in today at the peanut gallery is our beloved friend, Garrett Nahiwa. The king. Hey, hey, the hey! King. <laughs> I'm back. How's it going? I'm back, same size, better than ever. Same size. Let's go! How you doing? You're feeling good about something. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great, honestly. No, I'm feeling positive. Even outside of the sports world, man, I'm just feeling good. So before we get into it, we're going to take our kamikaze shots. Yeah, let's pull these ASAP. Oh, Gary can't show his face, I forgot. Cheers to you, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. All oh, right. What else are we drinking today, boys? Garrett, what do you got? Got myself a Miller Lite in my hand. Nice. Classic old beer. A fine pilsner, right? Yes, sir. Ooh, yeah, fine pilsner. Emerson, what do you say, bro? I'm sipping the same. Wow. The old trusty. I'm the ugly duck in the situation, I guess. Well, you got the best IPA out there, right? The shoots? I got the the shoots, fresh, <laughs> fresh squeeze beers. IPA, uh, twelve fluid ounces. It was packaged on nine, ten, twenty. It's from Oregon, somewhere. I in believe Oregon. it's from a place called Bend. Is it Bend? Uh, or is it Eugene? Bend, yeah, he's right. Bend, I Oregon. I think it's Bend. Talking like a true beer man over here. I uh, mean, I don't, I don't know a lot, <clears throat> but I know. But that. I know some. <laughs> Six point four percent alcohol, not bad. So you're gonna be tanked pretty soon. It's no hop again, but you know I'll take it. <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of the sauciest episodes we're gonna have in a while. <laughs> no, on that note, what do we got going on today then? <laughs> we're gonna get into the uh, NASCAR championship. Um, uh, college football. We had some big, big games this big, week. Huge, big, huge, yeah. huge. As the now former president would say. Uh, oh, do you want to talk politics? No. Nope, okay. Like we said, right. <laughs> no politics on this show. No politics. Uh, and then we got some football, NFL football, to talk about as well. Yeah, we do. Week nine just just happened. <clears throat> now we're here. Uh, anything else? No. We have a few questions to answer at the end of the show. You want to talk about your your thing that you want to talk about? The main part of the show? Yes. So, near the end of the show, we're going to do a college football style rankings of our NFL teams. It was tough, man. I won't get it is, too yeah. much into it right now, but it was tough. I'll just kind of explain what that means when we get there. But yes, yeah. that's, uh, that's going to be the main focal point. We got uh, Q&A. Q&A, yeah. And you have a bold prediction, but I don't believe you brought alcohol in here. Shit. That's why you brought me. Yeah, Gary can make a run. Cool. We got some we got some vodka, rum. I've got two whiskey. legs. You do have two legs. You actually have three, check. You got three legs, but you know. <laughs> hey, hey. Well yeah, and my two legs take up at least two thirds of my body, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a second story. Which two legs though? Oh. Chill, chill, chill. All right, chill. Let's, let's start off NASCAR so Garrett can glow. <laughs> so, <clears throat> on Sunday, Chase Elliott won the 2020 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Championship. Congratulations. To right him. there. You see that? You see that? Right yeah, there? Garrett's happy. Speed. Speed. So, that basically clinched. Uh, Look at that, baby! 163! <laughs> Came from the rear! <laughs> Here, just take this. Take this away from me. Yeah. yeah. No, oh, I'm going to take Garrett. I'm gonna take this. This is my trophy. Garrett had a ma miraculous comeback this, this postseason. And, oh, uh, God. Pull it off. He won the, the house pool. Good for him. <laughs> hey. Cheers to you, my friend. Yeah, cheers to you, brother. Hey. All I got to say is, glad it wasn't Ashley. Mm -hmm. Touche. My first W in any sort of sports betting. There was no money involved. But bragging rights were involved, which is But arguably, bragging rights are everything. Worse. Bragging rights are great. It's worse. It's yeah. almost, yeah, no, it's, it's almost worse. better than, yeah. It's better. Bragging rights has a higher currency than money. It, it, in some cases, like this one, it does, yeah. 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 So Chase, uh, he was able to battle back <laughs> from a failed pre-race inspection that forced him to uh, the back of the field at the start of the race. Um... Yeah, and... Gas is on the right. <laughs> like we said, his... Lead his, foot. His win helped Garrett seal the deal. Got that W. There was a few drivers that raced their last race yesterday, or on Sunday, that is. Uh, Jimmy Johnson being the most prominent one. Seven-time champion. A GOAT. Yeah, and one of the best. Has to be, right? Yep. 
I mean, well, I mean, I mean, he's a top three or top four. Yeah, there's three guys now, including him, that have won seven championships: Dale Earnhardt okay. and Richard Petty has the other two. So, so he's up there. He's with those. He's on guys. the pedestal. Yeah, championships mean the most in in racing for sure. So I've said this from the get go: retired numbers in NASCAR. Retired, so. they do. His would be retired, right? I think so. I think. I think three yeah. is an easy one. Three hundred percent. Forty-three is actually probably easier than three mm-hmm. for Richard Petty. And then you could say twenty-four for Jeff Gordon and forty-eight for Jimmy Johnson. I think those are NASCAR the- do it. Yeah. Or at least do something. Like I think something I to come out. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think your dad might have the idea of like maybe having like gold around the the lining of it. Just and maybe, so you know, just so yeah. you know, it's like a special number. Yeah, that would be kind of that'd cool. be kind of cool. So yeah. NASCAR, get your shit together and just do that. Yeah. Other guys racing their last race, Clint Boyer, he was a long-time driver, um, and then Matt Kenseth is going back into retirement. He actually, he actually came out of retirement this year to replace Kyle Larson, who we're not going to talk about, because <laughs> you guys are racist. <clears throat> funny, actually, funny story I read today about Matt Kenseth, and, which is ironic. He um, made his NASCAR debut replacing Chase Elliott's dad, Bill Elliott, in a race. Back in 1998, so Bill's dad died, and he sat out a race to you know honor his dad and go to a funeral. And mm-hmm. Matt Kansas was was one was the one who filled in for him. Hmm. And he's racing his last race the same day that Chase Elliott That's won, won his first championship. Small world, the yeah. universe, man. It's Six crazy. degrees of separation. It's, it's, one of those uni- it's one of those universe things. Matt Kansas is also mm-hmm. a former NASCAR championship champion back mm-hmm. in 2003. Yeah. All right. What about Boyer? Boyer, he won some races, uh, but never was uh, a championship contender, I wouldn't say. But had a great career, honestly. It happens. Yep. It happens. So, Garrett, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm taking the whole thing next year. I'm just calling it out. <laughs> Remember this? We need to figure out a new uh, format. I know Danny wants to get in on it again. So, we'll have to we figure might it have out. to recite or like. Maybe do a, a different kind of draft style. Draft, yeah. Yeah, like a true draft style. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Everybody's jealous. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be mad if I don't get Harvick again because he's he's due for another championship. <laughs> Kozlowski came get out of here, he was, dude. The dude can't drive. He dude can't won get out nine of races, way. but whatever. Didn't win, didn't win the one that yeah. mattered the most. So. Whatever. That that brings me to the point I want to make is there's a few things that need I think need to change about NASCAR. All right. They're probably not gonna happen, but I just want to throw these things out there. And NASCAR has done a lot of things over the last few years to you know change the sport for for good. Yeah. Um, including the playoff system that they have right now. Um, next year, the schedule is going to be totally different. They're going to have six road course races on the schedule out of the 36 races, oh, yeah. which is going to be interesting. I like him, dude. Make yeah. him use the wheel. Yeah, right? <laughs> and they're also going to a new track. Left like, and right. I'm kind of forgetting where exactly it's at. I want to say it's Nashville. And I assume one of those road courses is Sonoma. So they're going. Sonoma will return to the schedule. It's it's always been there, but it's going to return to the schedule because they did but skip that, it. But it, is it not always on rotation for scheduling? It's always on the schedule every year. They skipped it this year because of COVID. COVID yes. Um, so it'll it'll be back though. Having be back. the races back at we, Sonoma, we got, we gotta six. go. We we do. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was like, if we could have a day. If they're in the backyard. We gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. Yeah. Especially if you. Was, with your drip, <laughs> with your drip, the fucking the visor, the sh- you got a sh- Hooter shirt too. No one's even seeing right now. Yeah. Supposedly had a championship Chase Elliott shirt on the way, but yeah, that one that just went south. Yeah, I, I canceled the order. Did you? It was pro- yeah. it was projected February tenth of two thousand twenty. So right before the Daytona five hundred, perfect. <laughs> He I don't. He wants it now. I want. I, don't I want, want it now too. I don't want a T-shirt in four <laughs> months. I want it now. Hey, like who's in charge? Hey, it's your money, and you want it now. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I got my money back. <laughs> so one thing. So a couple things I wanted to point about NASCAR and things I would love to see changed is the length of the season. So it's thirty-six races over basically nine months. Mm-hmm. It's a long season. I think they they could cut it back to thirty. Just because I mean in. There's another point I'm going to make about this, but like the middle of the season kind of just feels like a drag and guys are winning races. Like Kevin Harvick won nine races, didn't even get a chance to race for the championship. That's cold. It's, it's weird. <laughs> just to think about that. But another thing I would like to see 
to help that is that I think there needs to be more drivers eligible for the championship in that last race. Okay. I think just having four guys, it, it's cool, but you need to have more entry for more drivers on the last day of the season, yeah. in my opinion. <clears throat> Do you know what I would like to see for NASCAR? Daytona 500 be the championship race. Dude, it's... That sounds... As, as fun as that sounds, it's not realistic because that's not... It's... It's not NASCAR. Like it's it's stuff some, because of the restrictor plate racing and the drafting. It's a totally different game. It, those races are fun and they belong in the circuit, but I don't know that it should be the one that decides the season. So you know what I mean? Because Daytona, like when I think of Daytona, it is the Super Bowl. it's a Super Bowl. It is a Super Bowl for sure. And Daytona is the first race in the season, right? It is, yeah. So it's it's I mean, the, it's like the kickoff. <clears throat> it really is just the kickoff more than anything. I was, it, it, it would just it would just be cool if that was for the championship because it'd be yeah. Be huge. It'd be, I mean, it's a fun track. But I guess yeah. it would put less emphasis on somebody winning it if it wasn't, or you know, because there's only a certain amount of people that could win for mm -hmm. the last race of the season. Yeah. So I guess that makes sense. And in those races, as fun as they are to watch, they're they're crapshoots. <clears throat> so like, do you want your champion to, to be decided on a, a race that is like you know a roll of the dice? No, I Not, yeah. But you have to understand where I'm coming from. Right? I, I totally do. I think at it'd least, be super least, fun. At least the hype of it. Yeah. Like, there should be more hype to the final race of the season. There should, yeah. Which, NASCAR's done a great job of, of making the last race more interesting because you could argue that up until they've created the for this format, 95% of the time, the season was decided, or the champion was decided before the last race even started. Yeah. So, they've done a good job with the playoff system that they have. I think they could tweak it a little bit, just have more drivers eligible for that mm -hmm. championship. One other thing, last thing we're going to say about NASCAR is, they, they need less cars on the, on the track. Less cars on the field. Yeah. They've even trimmed it down. Like, it's it's be anywhere between, like, 37 and 40, I feel like, every week. It used to be 43. It used to be under 30. It used to be 43 every week. It needs to be under 30. I think 30 would be fine. Yeah. There's just too many cars out there that have absolutely no chance exactly. of anything. Nothing. I mean, honestly... And they just cause more problems. They and they're, just, they're getting in the way. Yeah. Especially the short tracks. They're just they cause the more problems. They... <clears throat> You yeah, because then you start laughing and it's like wait you're getting into and then these amateurs decision are decision making with guys that don't deserve race. to be on the track exactly like guys that are we don't need these single car teams that are you know losing money that that's pointless we need that are literally just blockers yeah, there's there's probably only twenty cars on the track that really have even a sh ten five or ten percent chance of winning the race. Mm. Every week, so I think they need to trim the field down. Other than that, other than that, now it's NASCAR's time for, over. Now it's time for you guys, and we're gonna celebrate. You know, I, I I wanted to win this thing really bad, but I am a Chase Elliott fan at heart. So he's kind of a pimp. I gotta say, gotta give it to <laughs> he's him. He's kind of so a pimp. in honor of Chase, we're gonna do a little. Uh, we're gonna rip the beer bong here. Oh, fucking beer bong, bro. Yes, uh, we are. Was, was yes, we are. A couple weeks ago. This is one of my favorite purchases of all time. Just going to be completely honest about this. Are you not going to get in the... Uh, yeah, I'll be in it. All right. Anyway. Well, I'm pouring two in here, right? Yeah. Right. It is closed, right? It, it is closed. It's right? closed. Right. I was like, I may even open yeah. it. Right pulling right it left. Okay. All right, pour the first one. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at us. We're spending almost 15 minutes on NASCAR today. I like it. Shit. It's got to be a record for for the sport, for us. And you may have to close it, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Good thing we brought towels. Can you grab me one of those? Oh, my God. <laughs> Why would you keep it open? I, well, just I, in I the beginning. I kind of wasn't paying attention you, to be clear. Yeah, you can keep it open in the beginning if you're going to do multiple <clears> because it lets it aerate, but you just got to catch it right at the end. So. Right, uh, but then, want, let it do its thing for a little bit? We got, yeah, we got to let it settle. Let it breathe. Number two going in. Try to pour it down the side as much as you can. Yeah. There you go. As much as you can. Try to make it not. It's never perfect. We're not here for perfection. We are not. We're then, here for And then just make sure you keep that funnel level and then we'll rip her. Hell yeah, we're getting there. Huh. Yeah, I know how to pour a beer. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. All right, both beers are in there, boys. A lot, a lot of foam at the top. Hey, we're smart this, and you're sitting in your fucking shower after this, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All, All right. right. When you guys, hey, yeah, when you guys are ready. Yep. You ready? Yeah. All right. Go. Three, 
two, one. Woo! Jesus. It's a lot of fun. Mmm, that was pretty fucking good, though. How was that? Glad, Woo! Glad it wasn't me. <coughs> Feels like I'm gonna throw up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah! <coughs> No, no, it was good. It's just it's foam at the end. Dude, that thing has mad flow. Yeah, I, <laughs> but it goes so fast. It's so bro, good. Bro, I, I, on Halloween, I hit that shit twice in like a ten minute span. And I fucking gapped in your backyard so bad. Pc <laughs> jabs the right place. Dude, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah, uh, bro, I, just... I, I'm like, I'm like your uh, your fucking living room. <laughs> yeah, the, we'll, the, we'll, the day after. We'll forget about that. <laughs> I'd like to forget about that too. You right here? Yeah, now I'm I'm just. I guess we could wait a little longer for the phone to settle, but yeah, that's all good. Yeah. All right, but in other news, let's put it on the college football. A little college football action. Uh, we got some couple games that we thought were marquee games that we're going to talk about. <clears throat> First one, USC versus Arizona State. USC, man. <laughs> Lucky sons of bitches. <laughs> Won this game 28-27. USC overcame four turnovers and a 13-point deficit with less than three minutes left in the game. I saw Sports Center post that Arizona State at one point in the game had a ninety nine point eight percent chance to win this game. Yeah, and I lost. thought so too. <laughs> and they lost. <laughs> me, me and G were watching this fucking game. We were. Yeah, the biggest play. <laughs> well, there was like it's a kind of a sequence. So it was fourth and it was like fourth and thirteen for USC. They were in Arizona State territory, but so for, like fourth and thirteen with just under three minutes to go and. ASU jumps offside, and so they, USC's got a free play, right? Well, and every and everybody was freaking out that yeah. they were going about the like everybody yeah. was like, oh I shit! Thought, I thought ASU was going to win. Like the pressure was on. Slovis throws a little bomb down the left side to the towards the end zone. There's two receivers in the area. Ball gets tipped up in the air and lands right in one of the other receivers. Right hands in the bread basket to make it uh, 27 21. Yep. And USC's got to do the uh, onside kick. Of course they get it. Of course, because they got the momentum going, and uh, I I think the go ahead touchdown was also on a fourth down play as well. Inc- incredible. That finish. comeback was stupid. Incredible comeback. It's ASU, more like AS who? Yep. That's a bummer though. Exactly. You know, Herm Herm Edwards was not happy about that one in the slightest. Yeah. They're doing a lot of uh, a lot of gassers this week at practice. Yeah, they're running until they puke, for sure. They're running until they puke, for sure. <laughs> running, they puke, for sure. <laughs> What's the next game we The uh, next game is Florida versus Georgia, or Florida-Georgia line. You never know. Yeah, Florida. Like Florida beat Georgia 44-28. to Georgia raced out to a 14 and nothing lead. Florida stormed back, winning the game 44-28. to It's pretty impressive. Yeah. The, uh, I, I, I saw Georgia get up that 14 nothing lead, and I was like, damn, this is yeah. this could be a route early. And they, they actually tied the game quick, too. It was 14-14 before the end of the first. I'll tell you somebody who's not happy about this game. It's our friend Max Beckham. <laughs> Big Georgia guy. For you, bud. For you. For you. And Florida quarterback Kyle Trask, by the way, with 474 yards passing and four tutties. He had a day. That's a... He had a day. That's almost like KJ Costello right there. <laughs> it's pretty good. Highs in favor, right? Heisman hopeful. Yeah. Hey, you were right, but just he was on a Stanford. <laughs> Except Mississippi State's like one in five since then. Game of the week, arguably, Clemson versus Notre Dame. Crazy game, honestly. Went double overtime. Notre Dame won this game forty seven to forty. This was I'm not gonna lie, it's probably the, the game that I actually watched all the way through. Great game. I wish I could have watched more of it. I was at work, but it was it was wild. Um to me the big thing about this game is that Trevor Lawrence didn't play because of COVID. For sure, yeah, yeah, no doubt. You know, you were telling me a couple days ago that the defense for Clemson wasn't playing well. Well, yeah, the, the thing is... Or you thought they weren't, you know, they couldn't stop a nosebleed. Or they yeah, my, my point was, like, would Trevor have made that big of a difference? Because the, uh, the guy who replaced him, DJ Yui Ungalele, there you go. Uh, was a, he's one of the top prospects mm-hmm. coming out of high school. Yeah. Um, he had a great game. I mean, he threw for 439 yards and had three total touchdowns. I, I wonder how much of a difference Trevor would have made, but at the same point, 
uh, Clemson was only four out of 15 on third down, so he would maybe change things there. To me, I think they win with Trevor Lawrence just because I've seen Trevor Lawrence lose one college football game in his career. Yeah. And it's hard, it's hard to think that he wouldn't win this game. I think the intimidation factor has also got to be considered, mm. too. Because, yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, like you said, he's, he's one of the best college football quarterbacks of all time. He's, yeah, he's, you know, yeah. he's probably going to go three straight national championship games. Yeah. And, I mean, it wasn't an easy win for Notre Dame by any means. No. They, they had to tie the game with 22 seconds left. Yeah. And then uh, took two overtimes to, to get it as well. And I'm just I'm telling you, Trevor Lawrence is playing. Trevor Lawrence, future cowboy, by the way. <laughs> you <laughs> Future jet. I'm laughing at a different joke. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Fuck the Jets. Um, yeah, that was, that was a great game. Notre Dame had 208 yards rushing. They really, yeah, they just pounded it down their throat. Yeah. They're great on third down. Ten for nineteen. That's yeah. That's, that's pretty good. solid that's against good. you know Clemson, who we think has a, a good defense normally. Yeah, but mm-hmm. you know they, Ian they, Book they, they get they get top prospects yeah. every year. Ian Book got it done, and they stopped the run. I think that was a, that's a huge thing we need to talk about. Thirty three rushing attempts for Clemson, only thirty four yards. Oof. That's insane. That's not, that's honestly unheard of. That's a uh, one yard per rush on us. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Point, point nine. 1.01 point zero one yeah. yards per rush. <laughs> You're the math guy on here. So. I, that's that's a, just a total guess. It might be 1.03, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking rain man over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all, amazing game. I was working at the time, and it was so fucking busy at the bar. But all I heard was Notre Dame fans. Cocksuckers. <clears throat> Notre Dame fans yelling. Was there a lot of them there? There was, the only, there was definitely no Clemson fans. Um, I know Notre Dame travels well, so I'm not surprised. Notre Dame has a, they have a, a large. They have base. a nationwide fan base for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, they uh, they were loud and they got it done. They were loud and they were proud. Probably the probably the best college game of the year so far. I mean, it's got to be up there. Yeah, matchup wise for sure. For the matchup and then the, how it, how it went. We just let's not forget T Law didn't play though. T Law did not play. T Law is that dude. And I'm glad that. Well, the AP poll has them still at number four. I'm, it's going to be interesting to see what the committee, the playoff committee, puts them. You know, come time because they uh, their first release is in two weeks from now. Gotcha. Yeah, so it should be interesting to see what see what they uh, put Clemson at. All right, on to some NFL news. Let's do it. First game we're going to talk about. You know, we're going to do like we usually do a couple local games, mm-hmm. and for some reason throw in the Cowboys, but. Green Bay stomped your 49ers 34 to 17. Yeah, back on Thursday night. That seems like it was about two weeks ago now. Uh, did you watch it? I did. I actually uh, took the day off of work to watch it, and I regret really, that. really, really regret that. <laughs> yeah, I watched this game. It wasn't pretty, but I'm okay with that. Come I on. mean, when I, when I found out that Jimmy G and, and George Kittle were hurt for the game, I was like, it's over. It's, yeah, it's, it's over. not happening. Not this week. It's also, it's about time that Aaron Rodgers beat the Niners. <laughs> this doesn't count, though, because they weren't healthy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, Aaron Rodgers like, fucking finally yeah. beat him. But they would have lost if everybody was healthy. We yeah. know that. The Las Vegas Raiders beat the Los Angeles Chargers 31-26. to What a game, honestly. That it was came down to the wire. <sighs> that last almost touchdown. Yeah, by the Chargers. He, like, he had it and then didn't. And the ref gave him the touchdown initially, mm-hmm. and dude knew he didn't have it. I mean, the ball fucking scored out of his, out of his arms, and he still celebrated. Like, come on, hey, hey, we know that shit's, shit's getting overturned. Hey, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you can't fool people nowadays. It's replay. Yeah. Come on, dude. Um, I know somebody's probably happy with this loss. Is that Matt Finch? Oh yeah, he loves because, it. Because Herbert, <laughs> he he looks like he's he looks like he's pretty fucking good. He's good. He's good. He. he the like Chargers are just the kings of losing close games. He's he's like rookie of the year good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Omar, you know, I'm trying to think who else would be Pete Burrow. Yeah, but I think I mean when I watch the two play, Joe Burrow's good for sure, but Justin Herbert's pretty electric. Yeah, he reminds me a lot of Josh Allen, and I mean I like Josh Allen a lot, so yeah. I think you gotta you gotta consider him. The, the front runner at this point. Yeah. Uh, the next game we're going to talk about 
Do you uh, boys? I don't really know why we're talking about this. The cowgirls. Uh, you gotta mention your team. I know, I know. I just don't the like to. As much as we hate them. Yeah. Are you leaving? Yeah. Are you coming back? Maybe. Can you uh, bring a bottle of liquor? You 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 choose. Just bring one. He has a bold prediction, so we have to do that. Cool. My man. I got you. Our boy Chase. <laughs> so, this might have been the best game the Cowboys have played all season. It was honestly a, a great game. It was. Yeah, it came down to the... They, they, they played great as a team, and I, there was a, you know, I don't have any more hope for the rest of the season, but after, sure. like, that, that last game, I thought they were going to beat them. Yeah. I mean, Garrett Gilbert kind of led he, the way, and... He did not play terrible. Yeah. He played better than Bonaducci fucking two weeks ago, or <laughs> whatever his name is. <laughs> Yeah, Ben yeah, that guy. Yeah, whatever his name is. <laughs> he, uh, I, one thing I want to say about this game real quick is that the Pittsburgh Steelers led in this game for a total of, I want to say, 1 minute and 58 seconds. It's crazy. And Jimmy, I really wanted to kind of glow on the show <laughs> just for Jimmy. They were so close. So close. So close. <laughs> so close. But Jimmy, this is, you know, you got that. What was the, what was the lead? Was it 13 nothing? At one point? Something like or something, that. yeah, something close to that. They were leading at the half. They definitely the half. had a healthy lead to start the game. Uh, Jimmy, I wanted to gloat, but I'm actually happy because that means the Cowboys are that much closer to get Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Still, what, less than 10% chance? Hey, hey, hey. So you're <laughs> telling me the chance. You're, you're right. I am. I am. Moving on. A couple other big games that we're going to talk about. Bills beat your Seahawks 44-34. to 34. Love them. You think the Bills are legit? Oh man, I'm like I'm really on the fence on this one because they're very Josh Allen, you know, dependent. Well, well, okay. What team isn't dependent on their on, on their quarterback? Good point. But Josh Allen scares me because I haven't seen him do it consistently in his career. It's fair. He's been he's been really exciting this year. <laughs> he didn't come back with liquor. No, no, I was joking. I was trying to play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I've seen enough consistency from Josh Allen to say that he can be the guy. Because, like, like, Patrick Mahomes, sure, well, the Chiefs will lose a game here and there. Yeah. But, obviously, full confidence in that guy, right? And I, at this point, that's kind of what it takes. I know, like, Russell Wilson is awesome. But we know that the Seahawks defense is a little iffy. So, and we're going to get into that in a second. But the Bills have a pretty complete team. And when Josh Allen plays really well, they win. And when he doesn't, I, they haven't really found ways to win. So I'm not so sure that I'm sold on the Bills as a contender yet. Well, I, 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 see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but they are, they are fun. I mean, 44 points against the Seahawks, that's pretty good. To me, it's, it's more of the – it might sound ridiculous, but when you say to yourself – Right now, are the Buffalo Bills a contender to win the Super Bowl? I'm saying no. Just because I've never known that. You know what I mean? For it's, sure. It sounds kind of crazy, but it's, sure, to yeah. me, it's like, I think the Bills are, they're good. We, we, they're, we've just seen yeah. the Patriots dominate yeah. that division. We've never, we've never seen the Bills. For sure. You know, the for Bills sure. went to four straight Super Bowls, but we weren't even alive for that. I mean, I don't know, it was in 94 they went. We weren't alive for that, you know? Nope. So, and that's just the way I think. It's not. No, I think that's a, that's a totally fair point. You gotta say it out loud. Sometimes are, organizations are the, are, the, are the Buffalo Bills contenders. I don't think so right now. I think yeah. they're very close. I do think Josh Allen's one of the better quarterbacks. I, in the I league. love watching Josh Allen play because when he's on, he is he is awesome. Oh, he came back with everything. He's got a fucking can for You're arm. A dirty job. Josh Allen. Yeah, speak. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. He he does, dude. He makes some throws that are fucking insane. I saw some set that um, he went. I mean, this is a set that sounds. It's gonna sound kind of weird, but he went twenty for twenty when throwing to receivers that were considered wide open, which means they have a, a three plus yard, you know, uh, cushion. Cushion. Yeah. Of, That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Which, that means he's not missing his targets. Because mm. last year, the Bills were good. They made the playoffs. Mm. But that was kind of one of the knocks on Josh Allen is he was just throwing the ball all over the place. Mm. He had all the arm strength but no accuracy. 
I think he's definitely improved his accuracy a lot this year. I, I agree. think uh, I mean, that's going to be the difference maker in their success going forward. For and sure. I'm not going to act like I've watched a bunch of Buffalo Bills games, but same, same. But they're they're seven and two. I mean, they're they're good. They're good. They're really good. So on the Seahawks side of things, do you think the Seahawks are a contender even with their bad defense or their shoddy defense? I guess. I guess yeah. I guess I should say. Yeah, it's uh, that's a tough one. Um, is is Awesome as Russell Wilson is, I think not. I think they have s- such a minimal pass rush. I mean, we saw Josh Allen have all the time in the world. Mm-hmm. Plus, at the same time, I mean, quarterbacks are so athletic these days for the most part. Pass rush is, you could say it's not as important as it, as it used to be. but And also, I want to say the score of this game does not depict how it actually went. But they were up by like twenty yeah. something. They were right? the Bills were dominating the Seahawks. Yeah, they did. They did dominate. And I didn't watch this game, but yeah. it was the Seahawks obviously came back. But at a point, it was almost yeah. like a 15, 20 point lead. Yeah. And I'm gonna say that they. We'll get into it about their rankings, but they're, they weren't my top six. The Seahawks. They were not in mine either. And they're just, they're right there. They're they're a they're a very good team for sure. I honestly think they're very Russell Wilson dependent. Exactly. I, and I hate saying this because it's like it sounds like I'm a fucking sore loser. But if the Niners were fully healthy, I think they're better than the Seahawks. They absolutely are. I think I think easily because they have what I think is a good defense, especially Nick Bosa coming off the better edge. better defense than that. Better, better defense than the Seahawks. Well, yeah, I mean that's sure. easy. The Seahawks are, are giving up the most passing yards mm-hmm. in the league, and it's not even close. Mm-hmm. So they're getting torched on the back end. Even with Jamal, I mean, Jamal Adams missed some games, but even with him, they're still not good. This, the Seahawks are not shit without Russell Wilson. They would be a... They'd be a 5 win, 6 win team. Yeah, they'd be a lottery, or, you know... <laughs> I know they don't do a lottery in the NFL, but, you know... Like you know a top 5. Yeah. Top 10 pick. Top 10 pick, yeah. For, for sure, without him. So, yeah. I don't know if he's enough to get them to where they want to go. Yeah, it's... Personally. Did you see Russell Wilson was trying to trademark... The term "let Russ cook." <laughs> have you heard that term? I have, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah, you can hey, have that. Hey, try to get your money. I don't, hey, <laughs> you have whatever you want, boss. Yeah. And the other marquee game we were going to talk about was an absolute dud. The Sunday night game that I thought was going to be an instant classic, and I'm sure a lot of other people thought that, but it was the biggest dud of the season so far. Saints beat the Bucks 30, 38-3. I I can be quoted saying. I thought the Bucks were going to win by 40. I wasn't really being serious, but <laughs> I did say that. And they lost by almost 40. That's pretty funny that you said that. Are you concerned with the Buccaneers? You know, yes and no. I think I think that what their problems are very fixable. A lot of the game I saw Tom Brady dropping back, you know, five steps, and they're trying to go down the field. And I think they need to, you know, make some, some intermediate and shorter passing game. And they only, they literally handed the ball off in the game. I, I know they were behind early and often. They literally handed the ball off four times. That's not enough. So you got to have some balance in your game in the NFL. They had an NFL record low, five rushing attempts yeah. for a game. Yeah. And the fifth one was a knee, which is considered a rushing attempt. Yes. So, so. it was four handoffs. That's, four handoffs. That's ridiculous. Very, very minimal. What, what do you think? I mean, I like the Bucks as a, as a, definitely a contender still, but they're my top six. Then we'll, we'll get there. Okay. But um, I'm not. Cause I, I think I want to ask you this: Is it time to pump the brakes on it? Maybe a little bit. And I think this is a this was a big loss for the Buccaneers because the Saints now pretty much are in the driver's seat to win the division. And they own that that tiebreaker. Yeah, they beat him twice. Yep. Also, this is the first time Tom Brady has ever been swept by a team in his division. That's pretty crazy. That's incredible. Crazy. It's an incredible yeah. stat. I mean, I know he played in the AFC least for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's just I'm not, uh, and that was one of the worst games I've ever seen Tom Brady play. Yeah. And I'll give I'll give the Saints defense credit. The defensive line was getting to him. Tom Brady was hitting the floor a lot. Yeah, he was Sunday getting night. pressured a lot. And that's why I'm I'm intrigued by the Saints and what they did. I think the Bucks need to take a look in the mirror and you know come up with a better game plan than they did. Um, to me, this is what reminded me of when the Bucks played the Packers a couple weeks ago. And I think the Packers needed that 
really to bad wake loss. Up. I think the Buccaneers needed this loss to really wake themselves up. Yeah, that's fair. Totally fair. I'm not super concerned, but I do think we have to pump the brakes just a little bit. Yeah. On the Buccaneers. No doubt. Matchups for Week 10 that we're looking forward to. Indianapolis playing Tennessee on Thursday. That's which right. Is probably the best Thursday night game of the year so far. It's yeah. I mean, I would, the 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 uh, Buccaneers and and uh, Bears was a good matchup on paper. Yeah, yeah. and it was, it was a good game. It was a good game. Yeah, yeah. One thing I wanted to mention, which is I thought was kind of interesting, I feel like the Bucks have a little bit underperformed on the uh, big stage. in the prime time prime time games. Lost to the Bears on Thursday night. Barely beat the Giants. Escaped. Yeah. Against the Giants that's, on Monday night, and then got point. smoked by the Saints. Just saying. And also, the other loss they have against the Saints was, you know, Fox game of the week. So, yeah. I don't know if that's uh, just I a think, coincidence or. I think they did beat the, the Packers on the Fox game of the week too. They though. did. They did. But no, you, yeah, that's actually. I think that's a great play. I didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. Uh, the next one, Buffalo at Arizona. That's going to be a goodie. Yes, I'm Ka- excited for that. Ka- Two Ka- great Ka- young quarterbacks. Kyler Murray is that dude. We're gonna let's when it we're comes to uh, uh, when it comes to uh, oh, oh, no, let's all let's oh, we're gonna talk about. It. I just want to drool right. over Kyler. We're gonna wait till then. Man. <laughs> we're gonna wait till then. The boomer sooner. <laughs> um, and Seattle versus the Rams. That's a good game. It's gonna be a good game. Six and two Seahawks. Five and three Rams. The Rams to me are a threat, but they're still a very good team. They have a very good coach. They can absolutely beat the Seahawks. Yeah. I think this is such an interesting division. If the Niners were good, it would be even that, if, oh. or healthy, it would be even that much more interesting. I'm so sad it's not. Yeah, if, if the Niners were healthy, it would be the best division in football. I think that. Uh, it would be the. It would I think be, the AFC North is now the best division in football yeah. because of the Niners not being healthy. Sure. Yeah. It would be the, the best. It would maybe be the the best division in football ever. Uh. Like just like all those four teams, like just for the season or for 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 yeah, a season. For, okay, yeah. Okay. Like if if the Seahawks, Rams, and Cardinals, and then you have the healthy Niners, we're we're going at be, it. Every division game would absolutely matter. I agree. So that. much. Like it would be. May, I, that's what I'm saying. It would be maybe the best division ever, in a season. I would love to know like a statistic, on, like what, division has had the best year ever. Like as 20, far as right, twenty percent. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. Because you're probably right. Would, and and I don't even up. know if that like necessarily would define the best division ever. I just like look at those all these teams on paper, and they're all just so interesting and good. Yeah. When healthy, I mean, four know. four good quarterbacks. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo. I know he's had his ups yeah. and downs. Jared Goff, I think, is good. Kyler Murray is that dude, and Russell Wilson's in, is, could be that dude. Yeah, one of the top two yeah. three for sure. All right, it's time. For, for our college football playoff style yeah. NFL rankings. You know, I gotta, that makes sense. And I got to I gotta give it to you. Do, do you like this one? I did like this one. Yeah. And I uh, actually took some time today to do it. I didn't just bullshit like maybe I do in the past. But, well, because, you know, it's so easy to just say, you know, I'm doing, we're doing top five or we're doing top yeah. ten. And I don't, and I, I think this is a little fun twist because we're, at least for me, I'm not just saying these are the, the best five teams. I'm saying... These are the teams that I think deserve to be, would deserve to be in the top four based on what they've done, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, so you did six, right? Yeah, so we yeah, have yeah. top four and then the two bubble teams, like the college football playoff rankings love to do, which we said are coming out for the real college football playoff in two, weeks. in two weeks. So do you want to start it off? Yeah, so I think we should give our bubble, our two bubble teams to start. Okay. Who are you got? So before I start anything, what I did is what I think the college football playoff does is that I wrote down what I think are good wins. And I had nine teams to pick out of six. Sure, yeah. And I picked um, the best wins for each team that out of nine that I have, and then the best losses that they have. You know, I'm not going to get all their defenses and, like, special teams. Yeah, and that kind of I, shit. I, was, I was very so, similar. Yeah, you said you are on the same boat as that. Yeah. So, um, number six, I got the Packers. Okay. Number five, I have the Buccaneers. All right. So I, when I did mine, I, I kind of disregarded any team that had more than two losses, which I don't. I, I like your Buccaneers pick because I think they're very good as well. Yeah, because they, yeah, they were my only three loss team. Yeah. Um, so I think we had all the same teams except I disregarded the Bucks, but I I think they're very much in this as far as it, being in the picture. It's just hard for me to not have them on here because of what they've done this year. Because their defense is good, and then what they have on offense, it's just it just seems like it's it's just. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, 
I, you know what? And the Tom Brady effect. You can't, you can't, for sure. it's hard to count them out. In my for opinion. sure. We've I, seen it, you know. And I, I know in, when it comes to the college football playoff committee, they use the eye test for sure. But I, knowing that this is the NFL and every team has great players, mm-hmm. I try to take that out of consideration as much as I could. Okay. I just went on resume solely. All right. Um, so the Buccaneers I've disregarded, but I, I took eight teams and I broke it down. My two bubble teams right now are I have the Titans at number six and the Bills at number five. Damn, all right. Yeah. Okay. Who's uh, So who do you got coming in at number four? Number four, I got the Saints. Saints? I'm the same, same way. I got the Saints as well. They've beaten the Bucks twice, right? Yeah. Um, their, be- their other best win would be against the Bears. Yeah, and their and their good losses, in my opinion, were the Raiders and the Packers. They're, yeah, those are the two losses, the Raiders and the Packers. I mean, they were, you know, relatively close games. And the Raiders, you know, it's funny to say the Raiders because, you know, we Raiders are a good team. Yeah, the Raiders are good five team. five and three. You know, it's a, it's a, it's that stigma of the Raiders have always been shit. Sure. But right this year, they're not bad. Yeah, they're not. So I think those are the Saints' best two losses. Yeah, and they have three good wins, like we mentioned. Um, yeah. And what was one I think? Oh yeah. Um, they got plus forty four point differential, yeah. so it looks pretty good. They've they've also got Michael Thomas back, which I think is a game changer. I think they're that's going to help them a lot. Drew Brees needs Michael Thomas. Yes, and they've won three in a row. Yeah, so they're looking good. Yeah. Who's uh, at number three for you? Number three, I did. I put the Bills at three. You put the Bills at three, okay? Because in my opinion, they I had them as the most good wins on this my list. Do, it's okay, so I would I would agree with you there. They have they beaten the Seahawks. They beat the Seahawks, Raiders, Rams, Dolphins. Yes. Yeah, that's and their two only losses are against the Titans and the Chiefs, who are AFC powerhouses right now. Yep. So I had I had to put them at three. The one thing they did get absolutely obliterated by the Titans. That's what I didn't like, and also their point differential only plus nine, which is a little interesting. But I I like your pick. No, it just I I, because I I really flirted with putting the Bills at four. Okay. Um, and not even having any yeah. NFC teams in the top four. Because I even put Raiders question mark. So I was like, because back back to what we said, like, are they really that good? But they have five wins. Raiders, Raiders are not a bad team. Yeah. Who? Wait, your five and six was again. Uh, Packers at six, Bucks at five. Packers and Bucks. Okay. All right. Interesting. Um, and then my number three is actually the Baltimore Ravens. Wow. Yeah. I know they don't have the most sexy wins. I mean, their best wins. Their are Their best against- wins are the Browns and the Colts. Browns, Colts, and they beat the Eagles too. I don't count the Eagles. I know the, the Eagles are a first place team. That's why I put them in there. Um, and and the thing with the, which I'm sure you're going to say is their only two losses are against the Chiefs and the Steelers, Chiefs, Steelers who, who are the powerhouses, correct, of the AFC. That's, that's why they're up. That's a big reason why they're up there. Then oh, they, so, okay, and they probably, I know, I know they didn't win, and they blew it, but they should have beat the, the Steelers. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. I don't give a fuck. I, I know, I know. No, but I mean, I'm just saying that, like, that kind of factors in in a way. They have the uh, the second best point differential in the league. Yeah. Well, don't get it twisted because the Ravens, I picked them to win the Super Bowl. So it's like, I hope they do. Yeah. But it's right now, I just can't. So they're not in your top six? No. Wow. Okay. No, they're not. They're not. All right. No, 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 no. All right. All right. No. I forgot I didn't say my last two. Yeah. But so we, I think we have the same top two. Yeah. Who's number one and then two for you? Uh, number one's the Steelers, number two is the Chiefs. Same. And sure. I was really really close putting the Chiefs number one but I've been betting against the Steelers all season I can't, I can't do right now I can't yeah. the Chiefs best two wins in my opinion are the Ravens and the Bills yep those are the, I think those are two. a good like their best loss is against the Raiders they're, they're only loss yeah the Raiders. Raiders. yeah the Raiders um, the Steelers their best three wins I would say Ravens, Titans I threw in the Browns the Browns is a good win they also beat the Eagles so like I mean I know you, you weren't counting I, that yeah, I mean I get, they're it. First, they're yeah, I get it. They're our first place I get team. it. I get yeah. it. But I'm not going to. Yeah. NFC East shit, I'm not going to count. Yeah. And the Steelers, they're undefeated, and it's like. At, at some point, you got to, especially because it's the NFL, you have to give credit for a win, no yeah. matter who it's against, and no matter how, to, no matter how it comes out. You got to give credit to wins. This last week against the Cowboys almost made me put them at number two. Because of the that's fair. They did find the way to win, but yeah, that's fair. The Steelers, they're up there. They deserve to be up there, hundred percent. Yeah. Is that what you had too? Yep. So I had Steelers number one, Chiefs number two. Yeah. I think, in in like I said, the way I wanted to do it personally is kind of think the way the committee would think, and you know, being eight and zero. Yeah. 
in there to do only other Dude, this was tough. Was, I mean, yeah, I, I would agree. Mine's I, certainly I, not perfect. I'm glad we didn't have the same shakes. Because usually, we, usually we, we do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually we do. No it. question. Like I was, like I said, I was very close to putting the Bills in the top four. I was very close with the Packers and Seahawks maybe being there as well. Yeah. I thought the Ravens kind of being number three was not a not a gimme, but I think it's I think that's pretty bold of you to say. Yeah, it was not a gimme, but I I know what I. I've seen from them. Yeah, they've they've blown teams out. They've also been blown out once by the Chiefs, but yeah. they've blown teams out, and their only two losses are against good teams. The two teams ahead of them, so I, I'll give them that. So I think their resume is is about as stout as any of those teams. That's why I got them. I gotta say, after doing this, I have a little more respect for the college football playoff committee. Right, because it's like it's hard, and they got more teams to worry about. I mean, I know it's, it's there's there's fewer teams that are really legit, but yeah. yes. You, it's the, tough. I mean, I don't think either. I don't think either of ours are really wrong. No. Like, the, like the people, the other teams I had on here that didn't make the cut were the Ravens, Titans, and Seahawks. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I think it, all those teams are great. You know, yeah. they have six wins, two losses all together, or you know, all three of them do. Yeah. But yeah, I liked it. That was fun. Good I, section. I, I, I think um, I enjoyed doing that. We should re up this every two weeks for the rest of the year. I think so. So we'll do it after week 11, 13, 15, and seventeen, which will be last week. Down with that. So we'll re, uh, That's cool with me. Refresh those. Um, and I think it's time to move on to QA. QA already? Best part of the show. QA. Um, we'll leave it off. You want me to start it off? Yeah, do it. Our first question is from underscore Katie Face. She <laughs> said, okay, but why did Brady throw so many intercepted passes on Sunday? Well, the, the Saints happen to have hands in Tom's face all fucking day. Tom was hitting the floor, like I said. He was. Um, I actually don't think the Bucks had a good game plan, and uh, you know, we've heard talk about that, but yeah. It's because Brady's washed. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, the Buccaneers just played great. Yeah. Also, they introduced AB to the team, and you could tell that they were not, him and Tom were not on the same page. One of the interceptions just, Tom threw was because AB didn't, they had a miscommunication on the route. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of one of those things where, like, Tom was like, okay, I'm just going to feel this. I think he's going to go up the field, and he didn't. Misunderstanding. And, yeah. So it's one of the things yeah. that they gotta, they're got they going to have to work out. They'll get more comfortable. To answer the question up front, that's just how football goes sometimes. Yeah. You know? Just how it goes. Tom had a bad – the Buccaneers as a team had a fucking awful day. <laughs> yeah. Our next two questions are from our friend Max Navarro. Max, thank you, sir. The first one he asked is, do you see the Dolphins becoming a contender sooner rather than later with Tua being the, the quarterback? Uh, I mean, I I think, I honestly believe they're going to make the playoffs this year. Especially with the expansion of the playoff system and just the way, I mean, the Patriots are not a factor like they used to be. Was, they're they're right there in the, in the mix. Um... I think the really only contention is the Raiders and the, the Browns. I, I think I like them just as much as those teams. So, yeah, I, I'd say they're going to go this year. As far as Super Bowl contention, that's probably a few years down the road, yeah. honestly. But yeah. I like what they're doing. I like their I coach. Did. I like the quarter. I like yeah, Brian Flores is good. They're, we'll figure it out. I'll it's say, really early to say. I mean, he's played two games. I'm going to say I'm gonna say later on this one. I mean, yeah, it, it, it depends on what you consider sooner or they, later. They got the Bills in their division. The Bills who, are going to be probably, interesting. Who's probably going to own it? I think I like Josh Allen more than Tua today, mm. but maybe that could change as yeah. things go. I mean, Tua, Tua was awesome against the Cardinals. He was. Yeah. He made some great plays. Yeah. The next question from Max is, do you think LaMelo Ball will go top five? Do you think he'll live up to the expectations or be a major bust? This is such a weird draft. I like. I really like this question, by the way. Yeah. I really do. Leading, leading up to this draft, it's such a mystery because there seems to be conflicting reports coming out every single day about who's going where, who's the best prospect, what you know, teams trading picks and whatnot. I think Lamelo is going to go top five after all after it's all said and done. Do I think he'll live up to the expectations? That's tough. I think. I think he's going to be a good player. I don't know if he's going to be a star. I, I could see him being a lot like Lonzo, where he's a good, you know, he's definitely a rotational player. Maybe not a star, though. Yeah. So if, if, if your hype, if you're thinking that his hype is a star player, I would say I don't think he's going to be a star player. But I think he's going to be 
definitely an NBA caliber player. I think he'll go top five, no doubt. And, you know, I don't think the expectations on him are that high. You think it's because of his brother? I think it's because his dad didn't talk as much shit this time around. Because well, Lonzo, with Lonzo, it was ridiculous. He was, yeah. like, saying he's going to – I mean, he called – I'll give him this. He said – Le, or LeVar Ball called him being a Laker, which he was. Yeah. But even like Magic Johnson was saying that he's going to break all of his records and all this shit, like have his number in the rafters. <laughs> there's no, I mean, I don't think there's that much. I wonder if true. LeVar, like after Lonzo being traded, he learned to shut the fuck up. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I guarantee that's what it was. I don't know. But I, I, also just, think, I also think that LaMelo playing overseas instead of college made, of made like, the expectations a little less. Yeah, because the United States has not seen him and. Yeah. The way they would have. But. So, I don't think the expectations are super high. They're not. They're not as high as maybe they could have been. So I think he'll live up to the expectations because I don't think they were as high as everybody else thinks. Yeah. They were not even compared to fucking. There are a Lonzo. lot of people that still think he's going to be, you know, potentially the number one pick, or think he is the best player in this draft, which is interesting. But we'll see how it goes, man. Yeah. Our next question is from Emerson's mother. Margan, fo 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 fo. I'm up. <laughs> she says, "Love my new shirt. We when does that? Ba- when does basketball start? And how are the Dubs looking?" So basketball starts uh, tentatively on December 22nd. Okay. Which I'm stoked about. Right before Christmas. That's right. Love that. Uh, the Dubs, as in the Warriors, are looking good. I mean, Steph's gonna be back. Clay's gonna be back. Draymond's still there. They're a little young and inexperienced. As far as the role players go, but uh, I'm excited to see what they can do. I mean, obviously, Steph and Clay being back together is going to be really fun to watch. And uh, when does KD, KD come back? <laughs> oh, he does come back this oh. year, but not for the Warriors. Not for the Dubs. Not for the Warriors. Um, to answer this question, I picked the Dubs to go to the Western Conference Finals. In my bold prediction. You so did. I, I expect them, I expect them to look pretty good. Pretty, yeah. pretty. I think pretty I good. think the Warriors are going to be a playoff team. I don't know if I have. Finals expectations for them, but I think they're gonna be good. They're gonna be just fine. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, I think they're gonna be dark horse, dark horse too. I think they're gonna be a kind of. They will be somewhat slept on. I will give you that. They're people are forgetting about them right now. Yeah, because they they you know, just watched LeBron and the Lakers win the championship. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, if those guys are back to form, which I am mean, crossing my fingers, they will be. They will be because they're so much fun to watch when they're on. They will be a threat. Future sure. Hall, future Hall of Famers, they'll be they'll be back. Yeah. Yep, yep, no yep. question. One other topic. So that's the end of our, our Q and A. Yeah, thank you for the questions. As always, keep them coming. We love answering them. Yes. We really do. Appreciate I, it. I honestly. could do this for the whole show, <laughs> answering questions. It would be fun. It would be fun. We need like fifteen questions for that to make it a show, though. Oh, yeah. One other question or uh, topic, though, um, before we do last call. Um, you got a bold prediction there, buddy. We do have a bold prediction. We're going to get to in a second, but. Uh, my cousin Jack yeah. was the first one to mention this to me. Mm. Shout out to Jack. But uh, there was a talk about this in our little group chat today about Mac Williamson, former Giants outfielder, is suing the Giants over having their bullpens on the field. Oh, man. <laughs> Which wow. is like, pretty fucking ridiculous. But he's claiming that it was a part of the end of his career because he tripped... It, it, in a play in his career a couple years ago, he tripped over the mound and into the you know side wall and got a concussion. Mm. And he's claiming that that what led to the end of his career because he never made it back. So, and what's your opinion on this? I think it's a it's a ridiculous claim that that was what you know derailed his career. I mean, I I get it. Like, I, I here's one thing I'll give him. He was finally, he was a prospect in the Giants system for a long time. He kind of had, he, he raked in the minors, kind of had trouble in the majors, but seemed to actually be figuring things out at the major league level that year. Um, and then this happened, came back that same year, was not the same hitter, Giants ended up releasing him. So I'll give him that, that he was is frustrated that things were going his way and then all of a sudden something kind of ridiculous happens and... He never made it back to where he was, yeah. but I don't see the case because there's nothing. I don't think there's anything in Major League Baseball's rules that say you can't have bullpens on the field or this and that. So he doesn't have a great case going for him yeah. in that regard. 
but I do feel a little bit bad for him. What's, what are your thoughts, Cage? He's stretching on this. He's really stretching. He's stretching he really on is. This, man. He really is. But, you know, if he, if he feels like it's the reason why his career's over, then I'll give it to him. Might as well just try, right? Yeah. Like, you know, he probably wants to get more money because he knows his when, career's over. When in doubt, sue. Yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, sue. I like that. Yeah. All right. Last call time, baby. I'm, I'm going to pour my shot up now because I know it's coming. <laughs> Do you have any bold predictions you want to throw out? Because I got one brewing. You got a good one. Yeah. I do not have any. Okay. Anyways. I don't. Um, so, I, you know, do, do you think this is pretty bold? It's interesting. It's interesting. Okay. It's, either way, I'm going to take the shot. We can decide whether it's bold or not in, yeah. in years to come. I, I like it. This it's, is, it's this is a long-term prediction. It's a long-term one. It's like, a long-term prediction. I don't even know if this show will be around when this one's going to be. It's very possible it's not, but we're going to... Knock on wood, and hope hopefully it is. Yep. Uh, so, Christian McCaffrey, he's a smart guy, right? Uh, yeah, he went to Stanford. He went to Stanford. He got Stanford education. So I would say, yeah, he is a smart guy. Um, also, his dad, Ed McCaffrey, went to Stanford. Was so a wide receiver for the Broncos. Broncos. Yeah. yeah, good player. Good player. Good player. Um, so I think, you know, considering Christian's a smart guy, knowing that running backs don't tend to last very long in the NFL. And he's not a normal size running back. Yeah, he, I mean, he's not small. He's not huge. But um, he he came back this week, had a great game against the Chiefs. Yeah, he's a baller. Made some, made some plays with, his, with the hands as he all, usually does. All hands team. Yes. Uh, and I think we were watching some highlights of him yesterday, and we saw him make yeah, a play. You're, and we're you're, like, you're feeling froggy. And we were like, okay, you, he kind of looks like something that he's – that. We wouldn't necessarily consider him, but my prediction, given that dad was a wide receiver, given that I think he's a smart guy, and that running backs don't last, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, at some point in his career, will m- switch from running back to wide receiver. I, I like it. I do. You made this yesterday, too. Yes. I'm feeling very confident about this. I think this is a... He's going to turn into a better Dexter McCluster. <laughs> yeah, it's throwing it back, I know. <laughs> He's going to be the best Wes Welker there ever was. He's going to be better than Wes. <laughs> so, no, I even saw it yesterday. He, like, he made a catch. I was like, it looking like Wes Welker yeah, out there. And that's not just because he's white. Yeah. <laughs> so, Christian, this is you. Go Stanford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull it. Oh, there's no beer in there. Oh. You know Please. I can't do it. That chaser was ruined. <laughs> Cut my nails a couple days ago. I can't open it. Woo! There you go. That was rough, but that's for you, Christian. Thanks for listening, Christian. Yeah. Appreciate it. I know you do. Oh, yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Did you shoot that whiskey? Or yeah, bourbon? it was bourbon. It's called Angel's Envy, I'll say. Some good shit. Is it? Good. Anything else you want to mention before we call it quits? Yeah, you know, I didn't have anything else to talk about. That was a good that was a good episode. We had a lot to talk about. Saucy one. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> I'll say. Getting ready to cook some steaks after Yes, this. we're gonna fire up some fucking tri tip after this. <laughs> Lucky was throwing out some bogos on, on tri tip. <laughs> Could not resist. So we're cooking one up tonight. It's gonna be tasty. Fuck That's yeah. our dinner. Uh congratulations again to Chase Elliott. To Garrett. Um that's it. Yeah. Thank you again to everyone Thank for you. your support. Um, go go find us on YouTube. Yes. If you know anybody Watch. that likes sports and likes, you know, I mean, we're we're for the casual fan. Yeah. If we're being realistic. But tell people about us. Tell them about us. Tell them to follow us on Instagram. That's our our biggest, uh, biggest platform. One. But YouTube, we Spotify. Do, we do got a Twitter, but it's like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck Twitter. What are you gonna do? YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Yep. Apple Podcasts. Um that's that's where it's at. Yeah. So we appreciate that's where we're at. Appreciate the continued support. Yes. Even if you didn't support us, we'd still be doing this. Yes. But we thank you for listening because it's been awesome. It's pretty much a shit show every time we talk. So. <laughs> I mean we love doing this for fun, but yeah. if it if it means something to somebody else, that makes it even more special. Hell yeah. Yeah. So Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Yeah, we will. Peace.